Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a bunch of stories to cover, so I figured I'd go over them like this. Starting with a new breed of malware, Threadripper 5000 leaked, RTX 3090 Ti release date, AMD's releasing new Ryzen CPUs this month, and record low GPU prices. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that a hacker group named Lapsus recently stole about a terabyte of data from NVIDIA's servers. And as far as we know, most, if not all of it, is first-party private data from NVIDIA. Well, guess what? The hacker group has taken that and created a whole new type of malware. Thanks. As you can see right here, it is reported by Tech Power Up, and basically what they did was they took some code signed certificates from NVIDIA's drivers. Now, I will say that these are expired. They expired in 2014 and 2018, but regardless, Windows is still looking at this as signed drivers. Therefore, you aren't going to get a pop up saying, hey, you may have to worry about this or anything like that. Windows looks at it as an official driver. And because of that, it completely lets it through. And unfortunately, it's not an official driver. It's actually a Quasar Rat Trojan. So this virus basically grants remote access to your machine to the attacking group, giving them read write access. So basically they can do just about anything. And of course, it's stuff like this. Why it really is concerning when we see especially major technology companies getting hacked, things like that. I don't really think anyone knows exactly how they've done it yet, possibly just gotten access like direct physical access to their servers. I, I don't know, complete guess, have no idea. But regardless, they were able to take a full terabyte of information from NVIDIA, have now put it into a Trojan horse and Windows completely thinks it's a normal driver. So major issue here, and obviously this is something, especially I will say it is good that they are expired, so hopefully Microsoft will take that information and go ahead and cancel those certificates. But of course, there is gonna be official software out there that uses those certificates, so this is a very serious issue. Either way, as always, make 100% sure that you're installing things from official websites, you aren't clicking on weird links or possibly just any links hardly at all from an email or anything like that. I typically advise if you don't recognize the website, go ahead and look up like a virus scan, type in the website in there, see if it has any known viruses, Trojans, things like that. And then if you feel safe or comfortable, maybe then visit it, but definitely don't really click on anything in the links, especially since those links can really say whatever they want it to say, just because they're hyperlinks. And then whenever you click on it, it could take you basically anywhere. Now, if you aren't subscribed to GamerMeld, what are you doing? There's a ton of releases happening this year. And if you're wanting to stay up to date on everything, GamerMeld is that place. Just hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to receive notifications. I've got some really exciting stuff coming up that you don't want to miss. And next up for today, we have a report originally from the Chip L forums and later reported by WCCF Tech. And it is pretty interesting. First, or should I say, they actually do say two separate things. First, according to this, the 3070 Ti 16 gigabyte model has officially been canceled. And to be honest, that makes a whole lot of sense just because the GPU didn't make a lot of sense to begin with, or let's be honest, releasing any GPUs right now don't make a lot of sense because they're sold out in five seconds. They can't even keep the GPUs that they already have announced in stock, at least at reasonable prices. So the reason behind releasing more is obviously pretty absurd. I do understand that the companies typically already have their lineups planned for years in advance. So it does make sense, but they went ahead and canceled this one, the 3090 Ti on the other hand, which if you don't remember, we were supposed to hear something back a little while back. We heard nothing from the company. You know, they announced it at CES and then said, they were going to tell us more they haven't well according to this it is set to launch on march 29th so obviously quite a bit later than we originally thought and honestly i would argue almost certainly what nvidia originally thought especially since it's been over a month since they were supposed to give us more information we haven't heard a word so clearly this was meant to launch sooner but at least according to this it is coming on the 29th of this month and next up for today, it looks like AMD is in fact planning to release Threadripper 5000, 
We honestly expected some announcement at least at CES this year, but CES came and went, and unfortunately, we did not. Now, as you can see here, they are calling this Threadripper Pro 5000, which is actually something we saw leaked a little while back. Basically, it looks like there isn't going to be a normal Threadripper 5000 series. They are apparently going to be releasing it with the Pro moniker, and because of that, and potentially some added benefits over what you would get with a regular Threadripper 5000, remember Threadripper 3. 3000 had a regular Threadripper series as well as a Pro Threadripper series. Well, this one is just getting the Pro. Either way, we do have the specs. According to this, the press have been briefed on the upcoming series. So first up, as you can see, we have the 5995WX, which is a 64 core, 128 thread CPU, which of course means that they are going to be keeping the core count the same from last gen. Either way, you can also see that there's a 5975WX, which is 32 cores and 64 threads, then a 5965WX, which is a 24 core, 48 thread CPU. Oh, back really quick. The 64 core has a base clock of 2.7 gigahertz, and all of these have a boost of 4.5, almost certainly a single core boost there, but either way, a boost of 4.5. And then we have the 32 core 64 thread with a much higher base of 3.6 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz boost. Don't really have to say that because I just mentioned that it's on all of them. The 24 core 48 thread 3.8 gigahertz base, 16 core at 4 gigahertz base, and the 12 core 24 thread at 4.1 gigahertz base. All of these have a TDP of 280 watts. As for performance, unfortunately, we don't really have anything as far as I'm aware, but at least this is the full specs. It looks fairly impressive. All of them are getting a fairly decent boost over last gen. You can see that the Highest boost clock one was the 3945WX at 4.3 gigahertz, so these are 200 megahertz higher. And next up for today, it looks like AMD isn't just set to release new Threadripper CPUs, as if this is correct, they're also set to release four Ryzen CPUs this month. As you can see right here, it was originally leaked by Megasize GPU and later reported by video cards. And as far as what those CPUs are, let's go right over them. First up, we have the R5-5500, which is a six core, six thread CPU, meaning multi-threading has been turned off. With that said, the important part here is gonna be price. And at least according to video cards, the 5500 is set to cost less than Intel's Core i3-12100 CPU. And while yes, I know this is a low-end CPU and these aren't typically all that popular or exciting to talk about, but honestly, I think this is really important because AMD really hasn't done much with the lower end side of CPUs in quite a while. In comes Intel's 12th gen CPUs where they have some very impressive low-end CPUs with their Core i3s. So I definitely think AMD needs to challenge Intel in this lower end segment, and this could be a really great way to do it. But of course, they don't stop there. They have an R5-5600, which is a six core, 12 thread CPU. This is of course a non-X variant of the current 5600X, and it would apparently cost less than the i5-12400. So it could be a pretty decent chip for the price depending on how well you can overclock it. Next, they have a Ryzen 7 5700X, which is an eight core, 16 thread CPU and is expected to cost less than the 12600KF. And finally, we have the R7 5800X 3D, which is an eight core, 16 thread CPU and is built on AMD's new 3D V-Cache. At the end of the day, I think this is gonna be really good for AMD because as we've known since Intel released their 12th gen CPUs, they really hit AMD hard. And I really think this will be a good way for AMD to come back and compete with Intel price to performance. Though of course, time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, speaking of time, it is finally on our side as we have a new report from 3dcenter.org. If you've been following along with the saga that is terrible GPU prices, you have likely heard me mention 3dcenter.org before. And that's because they have been keeping track of GPU prices for quite a while. You can actually see it goes all the way back to January 17th of 2021, and at least once or twice a month, they end up checking to see how the prices are and 
we have a great milestone that just happened. As you can see right here, prices have lowered yet again from February 13th to March 6th. And what's so great about this is that we have actually hit record low GPUs, at least for AMD going all the way back to January and for Nvidia going all the way back, oh, January as well. So basically GPUs have not been cheaper since prior to January than they are right now. Now, obviously they are still over MSRP overall, and I fully do understand the annoyance with that. We have AMD 35% higher than MSRP, and then of course Nvidia 41% higher. So that absolutely does suck, but keep in mind that at one point Nvidia GPUs were over 300% over MSRP, AMD's got over 200%, upwards of 216% above MSRP, and even just a few months ago, they were at 87, 85% over MSRP. I mean, we're looking at literally January. So in just a few short months, prices have been dropping drastically. In fact, according to a new story by PC Gamer, if things continue down this path, and I don't wanna say it to jinx it, of course, but this is still really exciting. If things continue on this path, we could actually be looking at prices getting to MSRP by the summer of this year. Meaning all of those who were kind of claiming that prices should, start finally coming down and normalize and they should be able to keep up with demand sometime later this year. It looks like those may in fact have been accurate. Of course, as we've seen before, anything can happen from now until then, but at least for now, things are looking really good. And what's really exciting about this is that if it does continue, come time for next generation GPUs, we may actually be able to pick them up for MSRP, finally. So while that does it for today, I do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And my question to you is, what do you think is going to happen with GPU pricing? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.